All right, well, if you have a Bible, I'm gonna encourage you to open up to the book of Psalms, chapter 40. Come on, is it different in person? Do you prefer me on a screen? You know you could fast forward me. You won't be able to fast forward me today. So glad, I've been waiting so long to preach to people. You don't know how depressing it is to preach to a camera. Uh, I'm grateful for the seven or eight people we had in the room throughout uh, this pandemic and, and we've been preaching and they were, they were going in. And I also know it's gonna take a little bit for you to get back into the groove of church. But uh, when I say something good, you say amen, okay? If I say something that's not good, you say amen anyway, because it's polite, all right? It's just polite, it's encouraging. You can shout me down. I know I won't be able to hear you through those, through those masks, uh, but it's important to create an atmosphere of expectation. Come on, are you expecting something from God today? Yeah. Amen, I'm excited to preach to you today. I've, I've, just, I've just committed, I've committed myself to not preach sermons that, that, that I'm not living through in the moment myself. I, I feel like as a human being on planet Earth, I can relate. Wherever you are in life, I can relate. And uh, on that note, we started a brand new sermon series last week called It's Time. Did anybody hear Pastor Jenny bring an amazing word? She did great. Work your way. A lot of people don't know, I came down with an upper respiratory infection last week. I, I, I took a COVID test just to be sure. Still waiting on the results. I'm playing. <laughs> it was negative. It was negative, and uh, it was negative, and um, but I, I couldn't. I couldn't preach. I had lost my voice completely, and texted her with 48 hours notice, and homegirl threw it down. We love you, Pastor Jenny. Um, but we're gonna we're gonna stick with this theme of. Of, uh, of, of time. I want to talk about time and our relation to it as people and people of God. And so, uh, because I'm wrestling with time right now. And uh, I'll just get into the word and, and hopefully it'll reveal itself as we continue. Psalms chapter 40, verses 1 through 3 in the NIV. I waited patiently for the Lord. Come on, how many people know it's different? It's one thing to wait, it's another thing to wait patiently. I waited patiently. In the, in the Hebrew, you know what that translates to, literally? Waited patiently. It means I waited and waited and waited. Literal translation. For the Lord. And he turned to me and heard my cry. He lifted me out of the slimy pit, out of the mud and mire. He set my feet on a rock and gave me a firm place to stand. And when you finally get what you've been waiting for, look at verse 3. And he put a new song in my mouth, a hymn of praise to our God. You know, few feelings compare to receiving what you waited patiently for. How many people can say amen? I'm thinking about a child on Christmas morning. Do you remember that feeling? Waking up on Christmas Day, you've been waiting all year for your Christmas presents. And then you get there and they are there and you open them and you're excited. I'm thinking about a wife on her wedding day. Come on, wives. Can you remember that day you were like, you sent your dad over there just to make sure he was still there. Come on. He better not go. I'm talking to husbands who were not waiting for their wedding day. But if you grew up in church, you were waiting for your wedding night. Holla at your boy. Yes, Lord. Come on. My wedding night, I'll tell you what. He put a new song in my mouth. Yes, he did. He put a, I had a hymn of praise to our God. <laughs> It's good to be back. Amen. It's good to be back. However, however, as David will show us in the next verse that I will read in the same chapter, there are very rarely milestones in life that when you reach them, it is now happily ever after. Let me say it another way. Just because you're done waiting doesn't mean the waiting is done. Psalms chapter 40, verse 17, same chapter, same dude, David, same guy, just a couple of verses later. In the beginning, he's like, oh, my God, I waited and you gave it to me. Praise the Lord. And look how he ends the chapter, verse 17. But as for me, I am poor and needy. May the Lord think of me. You are my help and my deliverer. You are my God. Do not delay. Do not delay. Are you catching this? At the beginning of the psalm, he was waiting for something and he got it. And at the end of the psalm, even after he got it, he is still waiting again. There are two lessons that you will learn as you make your way through this world. Lesson number one is that some seasons are waiting seasons. Say amen if you know what I'm talking about. 
That's the first lesson. But if you live long enough, you will learn the second lesson. And that is greater than the first lesson. And the second lesson is not that some seasons in life are waiting seasons. But if you live long enough, you will live long enough to know that every season is a waiting season. Every season. When you're single, you are waiting to find the one. Once you find the one, you are waiting for the one to propose. Once you marry the one, you are waiting for the one you married to turn back into the person you dated. Come on, somebody. Come on. Then when you get married, you are waiting to have kids. Then when you have kids, you are waiting for that kid to, to crawl. And then once that kid crawls, you are waiting for that kid to walk. And then once that kid walks, you are waiting for that kid to talk. And once that kid talks, you are waiting for that kid to leave. Yes, sir. Because once they learn to talk, they learn how to talk back. I'm just telling you. If you haven't had kids yet, now you know. <laughs> you are forever waiting. When you're in elementary school, you're waiting to get into middle school. Then you're waiting to get into high school. Then you're waiting to get to college. And then you're waiting to get into your career. Then you're waiting to retire from your career. And then when you retire, you're waiting to go to heaven. <laughs> this is waiting, man. Life is just waiting. Every season is a waiting season, which leads me to my title. What a great question to ask. So if every season is a waiting season, then what are you waiting for? That's the title of today's talk. What are you waiting for? If every season is a waiting season, then what am I waiting for? I must admit, I, I hate waiting. Anybody like me, just you hate, hate waiting? Here are some things to kind of show you how much I hate waiting, uh, whenever I listen to a podcast or an audio book, I listen to it on one and a half or two times speed. Anybody, does that? Anybody else do that? Yeah. I just feel like if you're listening it to at one time speed, you just lost half your life. If you think about it. My staff hates that. I cannot show them a training video at normal speed. I just feel like I'm dying. It's like, no, this is a waste of time. I will pay extra money. On Friday, I found out that there was a flight that left two hours earlier. I was in Virginia uh, training up church planners. We, 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 we I say we because you help make it possible through your giving. We helped plant 18 churches all over the United States because of your generosity. 18 churches. Come on. One in South Africa, which is pretty exciting. I paid $150 to get home two hours earlier. Because I can't, I can't wait. I don't like layovers. I will not do a layover. Here's my one big admission, though. This is how much I hate waiting. I hate waiting so much that I will wait another two weeks for a doctor's appointment if it is the first appointment of the day. Because if you think about it, right, if it's the second or third, you don't know how sick that person is before you. What if that person got COVID-20? You know what I'm saying? And now you just there waiting and waiting and waiting. I'm like, nah, if we're going to, babe, she's like, but the next appointment's in February. I'm like, I'll wait. I'd rather, I'd rather wait. Here's the thing. I don't mind waiting as long as waiting is a part of my schedule. I don't mind waiting as long as it's a part of my schedule. And here's the big pet peeve. Y'all, this is so real that when Liz and I were going to have our baby, uh, J uh, J Justice, a lot of them start with Jace. Justice, the doctor said, do you want to do, do you want to do uh, induce, induce the baby? And, and, then the, and, the, and I was like, I had never heard that before. I'm like, and they're like, yeah, you get to, I said, so you're telling me I get to schedule when my baby comes into this world? Doctor said, yes. I said, put me down for Thursday. I was like, how's Thursday look? Thursday, put us down for Thursday, 7, baby, doing anything at 7, 7 a.m. We'll be there. So I love appointments. Here's my pet peeve, though. When I set an appointment, and even though I set the appointment, you're late to the appointment. Ooh. Especially if it's at the, it's at the doctor's office. Something you got one job, be there. Just be there. I get upset when, when someone else or something else disrespects my appointment. Have you ever had someone or something disrespect your appointment? Let, let me say it another way. Have you ever been disappointed? Well, you thought I was preaching on waiting today. I'm actually not preaching on 
waiting today. I'm actually preaching on disappointment today because I believe that the core issue of your disappointment, that the core issue of your anxiety, that your core issue of your depression, that the core issue of your struggle is, is not worry, it's waiting. It's, that's good, y'all. That's a good time. Now. Amen. Hallelujah. Unless it's hitting you, then you can be quiet. But at least raise a hand. Let me know. Appreciate it today. Listen, I believe that the core issue is not anxiety. It's not depression. It's not worry. It's waiting. And let me suggest something else to you. If your core issue is not worrying but waiting, maybe you need to shift your prayer when it comes to God. And instead of saying, God, help me stop worrying, how about you preach, God, help me see waiting the right way. Because most people see waiting as a bus stop. I grew up in New York City. I can't stand the buses in Florida. I don't even know how y'all ride 45 minutes for a bus to come. What? In New York, the buses came every seven minutes. And, and for a lot of people, they see waiting like a bus stop. What do I mean? That what you want will come next. At the bus stop, you wait for what comes, and, and here's the idea. If I wait long enough, what I want will come next. And I want to challenge you this morning, this afternoon, not to see waiting as a bus stop, what I want comes next, but to see waiting as a well. That if I dig deep enough, what I want is in it. If I dig deep enough, what I want is in it. <clears throat> I honestly believe that what you think you want what you think you're waiting for is not what you're really waiting for. Because if you're waiting for what comes next, you will always be waiting. But if you dig into your season and believe that God has something for you in the waiting, you don't have to wait any longer. Come on, give God some praise if you believe that. Now, now you're going to get the most out of this message only if you're real. Will you be real with me today? Say amen. Amen. I need your permission. I know I haven't seen you in a while, and my first sermon back should be something uplifting and encouraging, but I got fire for you today. I'm going to be challenging you today. Do I have permission to challenge you today? Yeah. Amen. Amen. I, I'll do it whether you had said amen or not. If you're here for the baby dedication, I won't probably see you again, so that's cool too. But I'm going to just hit it. I'm going to just hit it hard. I'm going to hit it hard. Because I don't think you're waiting for what you think you're waiting for. I think you think you're waiting for four things. I think the first thing you think you're waiting for is you're waiting for an answer. Waiting for an answer. And by answer, I don't just mean direction or clarity. I mean, you're waiting for a healing. You're waiting for a miracle. You're waiting for a child. You're waiting for a job. You're waiting for something to come into your life that's not there right now. I use the word answer, but I mean all of those topics. But here's my challenge to you. I don't think if you're waiting for an answer, I don't think you're really waiting for an answer. I think what you're waiting for is you're waiting for an answer to be given. To be given. And I don't think the answer is always given. Genesis chapter 36, verse 24, a very obscure passage of Scripture. The Bible is going over the genealogy of different men and even women in the Bible. It doesn't give much description on these people in the Bible. There's only one person in this passage that actually we get some background. We get an origin story on. And it's this guy named Anna. 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 These are the sons of Zibion. Aya and Anna. Somebody say Anna. He is the Anna who found the hot springs in the wilderness as he pastured the donkeys of Zibion, his father. Now, Anna was somewhere he did not want to be. How do we know that Anna was somewhere he did not want to be? Because the Bible uses the word wilderness to describe his location. And the word wilderness is the same word that we find in Exodus, which is a reference to the Israelites coming out of Egypt, being lost and wandering around. So we know that Anna is not where he wants to be. He is lost. And, being, and I don't know about you, but when I'm lost, I speed up. Anybody ever miss the exit on the interstate? And then however fast you were going when you missed it, you just add 10 miles per hour to that? Because you're like, I got to make up the time somehow. Right? When, when I get lost, I speed up. There was only one season of my life when that was not the case. That was when I was dating Liz. And I would get lost all the time because that was before we had a GPS. If you wanted to get somewhere, you had to use this thing called MapQuest. 
and you had to type in your instructions and then you had to print the instructions and carry the instructions with you. She was already four and a half years older than me. Not now, now we're the same age. But she was always four and a half years older than me and I didn't want to look like some little jit. And so I had to like pretend like I was older, like I knew where I was going. So I printed out the directions, but I never pulled them out. And we would get lost all the time. And she would know that we were lost, but she was so kind. She never called me out on it. So she would, she, would, she would be like, hey, do you know? She would always say, do you know where you're going? <laughs> and my answer to her would always be, yeah. She's like, because I don't think this is the fastest route. And I go, yeah, I know. I told her, this is the, you remember what I would tell you? Yeah, <laughs> I told her, this is the scenic route. <laughs> I said, this is the scenic route. Here was my mentality. I figured I'm already lost. Let's see what I can find while I'm here. I love that about Anna. Anna was lost, but he didn't speed up and try and get out of his situation. He said, well, you know what? I'm already lost. Let me slow down and see what I can find while I'm already here. And he found springs in the wilderness. Oh, one other little detail. The name Anna in Hebrew means answer. You think you're waiting for an answer, but you're really waiting for an answer to be given. And in life, the answers aren't given. You have to find the answer. You got to find the answer. You got to tell yourself, listen, I didn't mean to be here this long. But while I'm here, let me see what I can find. I don't like waiting. I was expecting to be out of this season by now. But now that I'm in this season, let me see what's in this season. Let me see what's in this season that can bless me. Let me see what's in this season. <coughs> that can take me to the next level. I promise you it's not COVID. It's an infection and I'm being better. I can't cough in public anymore. I tell you what. <laughs> Let me see. I know it looks like a wilderness, but I smell water. I know it's dry out there, but I believe that it's there. I'm going to look for it. I'm going to find it. You got to find it. I'm telling you, the next time prayer doesn't come through for you, don't say I'm lost. Say I'm looking. I'm looking. If you're still single, while you're in your single season, just tell yourself, listen, I didn't think I'd be single this long. I didn't think I'd be 30-something and still single. I didn't think I'd be 40-something and still single. But while I'm single, let me see if I can find some patience. While I'm single, let me see if I can find some self-worth. While I'm single, let me see if I can find some self-respect and not have to get it from a man or a woman for someone else. While I'm here in this season longer than I expected to be here, let me see what I can find. Are you looking for a career right now and you thought you would have had your career right Right now, well, listen, while you're waiting for your career, why don't you see if you can find a calling? Maybe there's a calling somewhere deeper in that career. Are you waiting for a child right now? If you're waiting for a child, why don't you slow down and maybe see if you can find some spiritual sons and some spiritual daughters in this season that you can father and come alongside and help grow. Are you waiting for a vaccine before you come to this building and worship God? That's cool. But while you wait, how about you see if you can find the spirit of God in your living room right now watching this online? Just convert that space into a sanctuary and ask the Lord to fill it. Sometimes you got to find the answer. You got to go look for it. Don't wait for it to bring you joy. Find joy in it. Right where you are right now. If you believe it, say amen. Come on, I think there's another person in this room today. You're not waiting for an answer. You're waiting for an opportunity. Waiting for an opportunity. You are waiting for the celeb to find your business and give you a shout out on Instagram to her 2.3 million followers because then your product and your business will break through and then it'll go through the roof. Somebody is waiting for an invitation to the room where it happens. Hamilton reference? No? The room where it happens? Get Disney Plus. <laughs> Let me tell you, if you're in this room today and you are waiting for an opportunity, I don't really think you're waiting for opportunity. I think you're waiting for it to be easy. I think you're waiting for it to be easy. But if the thing that you're doing is worth doing, hear me when I tell you, it will never be easy. If the thing that you're wanting to do is significant, if the thing that you're wanting to do is going to change lives, it will never, ever, ever be easy. I think of David who was given his opportunity before anybody knew his name. Do you ever realize that about David? If you don't know King David, you probably know the story, David and Goliath. But before any of that happened, Samuel went to him and anointed him to be the next king of Israel before he ever did anything of significance or prominence. 
Before he killed Goliath with the stone, he was already anointed king. Before he found a hundred Philistine foreskins. Yes, that's a thing. And yes, it's just as weird then as it is now. Before he did that, before he exercised demons playing his harp, before he did any of that, all the things that we know him for, there's a whole section of David's life we got no information about. But the way he stewarded that season of his life made God pick him before anybody else knew him. Don't wait for people to know your name. If you steward what's in front of you right now, God knows your name. God sees where you're at. God sees what you're doing. Look at 1 Samuel 13, 14. But now your kingdom will not endure. The Lord has sought out a man after his own heart and appointed him ruler of his people. Of his people before it ever happened. Listen, write this down if you're taking notes. Don't wait for the opportunity to come. Seize the opportunity you already have. Man, I love preaching. You don't understand. I, this is such a joy for me to be in front of you. I mean, there's a lot of pressure and anxiety when it comes to preparing for it, except today. Today I'm just excited. I got no time for anxiety right now. I'm just excited to be in front of you again. And, and, and you know, I, I prepare a lot for this. I, I probably prepared for this message right here maybe 17 to 20 hours. I, my first sermon, though, ever preaching was an opportunity that was given to me by my lead pastor, Pastor Eliseo Aponte from Brooklyn, New York. And he gave me an opportunity to, uh, to preach and, and the opportunity was children's ministry. And we all get our start in children's ministry, amen. And so I went down to the children's ministry and there were, there were 10 kids in that classroom. And I prepared, same, 17 hours for 10 kids as I'm doing now. And I remember running through my message with my mom who was in the front row and she was adamant. She was like, what's your sermon? I'll never forget. You got on me because I was like, your message needs a sermon. And I'm like, uh, needs a title. You were like, your sermon needs a title. I'm like, no, it doesn't. And she's like, yes, it does. And I'm like, no, it doesn't. And then you're right. Now all my sermons have titles. So I thank you. But the first time preaching to those kids and I gave my all to those kids. And at the end of the message, I asked who wants to give their life to, to Jesus Christ and all 10 kids raised their hand to give their lives to Jesus. Maybe it's because I offered them lollipops. If they did, I don't know, but I added, I'm just kidding, I didn't do that. But all the kids, and I'll never forget while I was preaching, there was an older lady of the church walking past the door. She looked in, she saw me, I was preaching my guts out and she looked at me, she said, oh, she said, that's cute. I'm in the middle of my sermon and she's all, that's cute. I'm like, that's how I, that might be cute to you, but this is a calling to me. This is critical to me. I'm just talking to anybody who started a business during COVID-19 and all your friends, oh, that's cute. You started a business, that's cute. Don't hate because I have the courage to step out and do something while you stay on the sidelines with your life. I'm going to go out and I'm going to make moves and I'm going to press forward. And it might look cute to you because it's a small opportunity to you. But the Bible says if I steward this small opportunity, if I do a lot with the little that God's given me, one day this opportunity will lead to another opportunity that would lead to another opportunity that would lead to another opportunity. I just kept saying yes to the opportunities that God brought me. <coughs> Seize the opportunity you have. And watch how God works in your life. There's someone else in this room. You're not waiting for an opportunity. You're not waiting for an answer. This is a good one. Ooh, don't say amen if it's you. Just, just stay right there. Just internalize it. <laughs> you're waiting for someone else to. <laughs> oh, yeah. You're waiting for someone, someone else to what? I don't know. I'm not a prophet. You got to fill in the blank. I think there might be someone here who's waiting for someone else to apologize. Someone here today waiting for someone else to affirm you. Waiting for someone else to encourage. <laughs> Say amen if you're waiting for someone else to get right. You're like, that's a trap, pastor. <laughs> Come on, if they would just get right. If they would just get right, then my life would, it would mean something if they would just get right. And, and you're waiting for that. If that's you, I, I don't really think you're waiting for someone else to I think you're waiting to be relieved of your responsibility. I'll tell you, I didn't expect a lot of amens during that part, but I think you're waiting to be relieved of your responsibility. Matthew chapter 7, verse 3 and 5. Why do you see the speck that is in your brother's eye, but do not notice the log that's in your own eye? First take the log out of your own eye. I love the imagery here. Have, have you ever, I need you to be honest with me, have you ever unfollowed somebody because every time they posted something, 
it bothered you? Oh, oh, oh it's going to be like that today. Turn. <laughs> just going to pretend like we all got it together. But just help me out so I know that I'm preaching to people who are real. Have you ever unfollowed somebody just because their feed just annoyed the crap out of you? I'll tell you, man. Or block them. He said block them. <laughs> that way they don't know. That way they don't know. Ghost unfollow. It's, and I love the imagery because he's saying if you see something in someone else's eye, don't, don't take the thing that's out of their eye. Take the thing that's out of your eye. In other words, if something is bothering you, it's not what you're looking at. It's what's in you. If, if, something, if someone else is bothering you, it's not even them that's bothering you. It's what's in you that's bothering you. Seven years ago, I unfollowed Rich Wilkerson Jr. on Instagram. <laughs> Rich, bro, you were just too cool, bro. <laughs> you were just way too cool for me. Your church took off. You was marrying Kanye West, the leader of the birthday party. President, future president, Kanye. Um, <laughs> hey, there was it. Rich wasn't doing nothing. Rich was leading this church, going to church. You know why I was bothered? Not because he was killing it, but because I felt like I wasn't. It wasn't. It wasn't him. It was my insecurity, my, my doubts about myself. So, so stop putting it on someone else. And maybe you need to look. Have you ever stubbed your toe in the middle of the night? and then cursed out the thing that you hit? Come on. Come on, you're walking downstairs, you step your toe on your couch, and you're like, couch! I hate you, couch! Go back to the pit of hell where you came from, couch! May your children and your children's children forever be destroyed, and may you find yourself at a goodwill five years from now. <laughs> Come on, and we, we will curse out an inanimate object when all you had to do before you got out of bed was turn on the lights. I'm just saying, there's always going to be things on the floor. There's always going to be obstructions to your path. Instead of praying for a clean room or a clean house or a clean life with no problems, issues, or annoying people, how about you turn the light on in yourself and say, God, show me who I am. Show me what's going on in me so that I can make the right decisions and head the right way. Listen, you're waiting for someone else to, but God is waiting for you to. God's waiting for you to. He goes, no, don't wait for them to apologize. You be the one to, but they're the ones that did me dirty. Yeah, but, but you had a part in that too. So you be the one who apologized. Don't wait for them to get right. I'm going to get right. God's saying you got to be the one to do it. If you really want to live in peace, here's the best thing. It doesn't even matter what someone else does. It's what you got in your own eye, in your own eye. And here's the last one. And maybe, maybe I know everybody can relate with this one. I think all of us in this room are waiting for it to be over. Whew. Please, can this be over? I'll keep it real, man. Somebody asked me, how you doing, Pastor JJ? And depending on your relationship with me, that will determine the sincerity of my answer. <laughs> if you don't know me, and I don't know you. How you doing, Pastor JJ? Great. Go Tony the Tiger on you, you know. Just great. But if we have a relationship at any level, I will, I will give you the same metaphor that I've been giving everybody. I feel like, you know how heavyweight fights are like 12 rounds? Are they 12 rounds? Yeah, heavyweight fights are 12 rounds? He was like, yeah, but now he's like, I don't know. <laughs> Let's assume that they are. I feel like I've been in a heavyweight fight and I'm in the 35th round. <clears throat> but I also feel, this is me being real, I also feel like I haven't lost a round. I, I'm just, I'm just, can somebody ring the bell though? Because this was only scheduled for 12. Anybody here with me? And I feel like I'm on round 35 right now 
and I don't know if I can keep winning. I've been dodging, I've been ducking. Last week I got a rib shot. I'm gonna pretend like it didn't hurt, but but it's but it's but it's but it's hurting me, and I don't know how long I can continue to go, and I'm just waiting for it to be over. This is my one little switch right here. I think if you're waiting for it to be over, you're not even really the one who's waiting. I think God's waiting. You need to write this down because this is going to deliver you. While you're waiting for it to be over, here's what God's waiting for. God's waiting for you to get over it. You're waiting for it to be over and God's like, it's not going to be over until you <clears throat> get over it. Matthew 26, verse 39. Jesus is in the garden of Gethsemane praying. Going on a little further, he fell on his face. He's about to go to the cross praying, my father, if possible, let this cup pass. In the King James, it says, pass over from me. Yet, not what I want, but what you want. Let this cup pass over. I love that the Bible gives us a sneak peek into the humanity of our Savior. 100% God and 100% human. And he is, he is there and he is asking the Lord, if, if, I don't, if I don't show up, can we just make it to tomorrow? Like I know this is the day that I'm supposed to die, but, but, but if it, what if it just, will it just be a better day tomorrow? Just, can this just pass over me? And maybe tomorrow it, it will be a better day and maybe we can find another way to save the world. And, and at the very end, God says no. <laughs> and at the very end of Jesus' moment, he goes, you know what, forget it. What you want, not what I want. In other words, I'm not going to pray that this will pass over. I'm going to pray that you would give me the strength to get, to get over. If you're taking notes, write this down. You're not trying to pass the time. You're trying to pass the test. Don't twiddle your thumbs while you're in lockdown. Don't twiddle your thumbs while you're facing this pandemic and there's unprecedented unemployment and unprecedented stress and anxiety and say, well, I'm just waiting for there to be a vaccine. When there's a vaccine, then, then I'll, then I'll, then I'll. And God's like, but this is not something that's going to pass over. This is something you're gonna have to get over. There is a lesson I am trying to teach you. And if you don't learn the lesson in quarantine, quarantine might pass, but you're gonna still have to learn this lesson in the next season of your life. I don't know if there's anybody here who can testify to carrying the same struggle in a different season. The same issue with a different boyfriend. The same problem in a different place. I'm going to leave this church and I'm going to go to that church. But in that church, you find the same problems you found in that church because the problem wasn't the church. It was a different place, but the same problem. And God's saying, don't try and just wait for it to blow over. There's something in this right now that I'm asking you to dig deep into and pull out. There's a test that's waiting to be passed. Listen, you could be 15 years old and in the second grade. Are you hearing me? What gets you to the next level in life is not age. What gets you to the next level in life is passing the test. And there's a test, there's a test. This is a test. And this is your opportunity to pass it. If you're in this room right now, I want to encourage you to stand to your feet as we close to today's service together. And as you're standing to your feet, I'm going to invite you to close your eyes. Would you close your eyes for a moment? Come on, there is somebody who is going through it right now. You are in a difficult season. You are in a waiting season. And, and you've been telling yourself, once this passes by, what I want will come next. Once this passes by, what I've been waiting for, I know it'll meet me and I'll be delivered then when it happens. And God is telling you today, will you make the most of this season? Will you dig a well in your waiting? Will you dig a well in your, because if you dig deep enough into today, come on, can we dim the lights in the house? Because if you dig deep enough, 
enough today, you will find what you're waiting for. Not, not later, not tomorrow, right now, in this moment, in this season, right now, if you dig. And so I'm going to invite you, as your eyes are closed, would you begin to just dig right now? What do I mean? Will you begin to have a conversation with God the Father and just say, Lord, here I am. Here I am, I'm waiting, and I don't want to be waiting any longer. I refuse to believe that what you have for me is in the next season. I refuse to believe that what you have for me, that the answer is just going to be given. I'm going to find the answer right now. Come on, I'm going to seize the opportunity I have in front of me right now. I'm going to do the thing that I'm waiting for other people to do. I'm not just going to pass the time. I'm going to pass the test. Come on, I can preach to you. And I, can, and I can pray for you, but I can't pray for you. I can't pray for you. Come on, I want to encourage you. It doesn't have to be a biblical King James prayer right now, but right where you are, would you just connect with God right now? Come on, connect with them, connect with them. Father, we love you. I'm in your presence right now, Lord. I'm digging, I'm digging, I'm digging. I need purpose in this season right now. I need hope in this season right now. I know the answer is here right now. God, reveal to me what is in me that needs to go. Reveal in me the imperfections in me that need to be sharper. Reveal to me the issues that I've got to deal with before I deal with anybody else's issues, Lord God. Help me get the, the, the love out of my eye, Lord God, before we get the sweat out of someone else's eyes, Lord God. I'm, gonna, I'm not waiting for it to get over, but I'm going to get over it today. Come on, is there anybody at church that is committing to get over for it today. It's not just going to pass over. I'm going to get over. It's not just going to move on. I'm going to move on. I'm going to make the most of this moment. Right now, I lift up my praise. I lift up my praise. I believe in Lord. I'm going to dig in this season. I'm going to dig in this season. It might be a wilderness, but I smell water. today. It was so encouraging to hear. You know, it was encouraging to us and we're hoping that it was the same for you too. And we believe that this message came just in time. Yeah. And you know what? You may be thinking that today's the day. I'm ready to let Jesus into my life. Maybe this is the first time you're making that decision or maybe just the first time in a long time. And you want to restart that relationship with Jesus. And you know what? It's actually pretty simple. All you have to do is just pray this prayer after me. So if you're ready, let's go ahead. Let's pray this prayer. Pray after me. Father God, I thank you for today. I'm asking you because today it's time. I'm asking you to come into my heart. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. If you prayed that tip prayer today, congratulations. Absolutely. We are celebrating yes. with you. It is the best decision that you could have made for your life. And it's not just me and Jenny celebrating, it is everybody watching online. We'd love for you to do one thing, and that's let us know that you've prayed that prayer by texting JOURNEY to 55498. We want to walk this out with you, answer any questions that you might have. You know, it might look like sending you a Bible or some resources in case you don't have one as well. And everything that's done at Journey is made possible by your generosity. And you can give on our Journey Church app or by going to journeyorl.com forward slash give. You can also text JOURNEYORL to 77977 or you can send it in by mail. And don't forget, right now you can join in on Next Steps where people find their purpose. We would love for you to go to journeyorl.com slash next steps. If you've missed anything, you can find all of the links in the description and our online host will be able to answer any questions that you might have. 
Yeah, I had such a great time with you guys today. And don't forget to register if you're going to be joining us in person for our next regathering service. And you're going to go to journeyorl.com forward slash regather. So whether we see you in person or right back here online, we hope that you have an amazing week and we'll see you soon. Thank you so much for watching. Don't let the journey stop here. We'd love for you to do one of three things, either subscribe, share, or support. If this ministry blessed you at all, subscribe so that you can find out when the next video comes out. Share it with a friend. You never know what the people closest to you are going through. Or you can choose to support us financially, which helps bring these videos to people like you. Thank you so much for your time. God bless.